all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. When they sat in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger rolled on the ground, so he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is not sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Again he stooped down and rolled on the ground. They which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even in the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Jesus lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, and said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. I believe that's what she got saved. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I'm going to preach the next few minutes on this thought. A big pile of stones. A big pile of stones. So Jesus comes into the temple. He sits down to teach. All the people are gathered there. Wouldn't you like to have been there to hear what he had to say? I'm sure he had something good to say. Amen. And in the midst of his teaching and preaching, here comes the doors bursting open and the scribes and Pharisees dragging this woman into the midst, disturbing the service, stopping the teaching, stopping the preaching to try to get their will forced on what Jesus is doing. Now they don't care anything about the woman. They're trying to get something on Jesus so they can stone him. That's what they want to do. So we see a few things here this evening and I'll sit down. Number one, I want you to see the intimidating presence. The intimidating presence. I cannot imagine the shame that this woman is going through as she's drugged in the midst of this people. The intimidating presence. I, I believe with all my heart she can hardly lift her head to see where she's walking. I believe her eyes are cast down. Her heart is beaten in. Her life, as far as she is concerned, is just about at the end. But from her peripheral vision, with her head bowed, just seeing just the bare minimum of what's around her, I believe she does see some things. I believe she saw, first of all, the scribes. The scribes. I'm, I, we see a lot written about the scribes, but I'm glad they were there because we have the canon. <coughs> The word of God because they wrote it down and I'm thankful for that. Amen. Amen. The scribes were there, but they had an attitude problem. Yeah. We've got to be real careful as Christians that when we find someone taken in this sin or another sin, we're very careful how we treat them. Amen. Amen. We love to quote that Baptist verse, Galatians 6 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in the fault, you which are spiritual, stone the sucker. <laughs> that is not what they said. So, says, brethren, if a man be overtaken of all you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. The way I help my brother out of the problem he's in is the way someone's going to help me out. I have the attitude, now you should have listened to me, and I told you not to do that, and now give me your hand, and I'll help you back up here where I am. That's the same attitude someone's going to help me with. And so she saw the scribes. I believe she had to see all the scribes. She had to have seen the stones. There were no stones in the temple. They brought them in with them. I don't know whether they had them in a bag or a sack or where they were just holding them together, but she had to see the stones that with the intent of taking her life in just a moment. If you've done any looking about stoning, you'll find that Iran is about the last country that does this on a regular basis. If you're a man, they bury you up to your waist, your woman up to the chest, and they use stones that will take about an hour to take your life. Thus they cannot rob, use rocks that are too big or rocks too small. The ad articles I read said they wanted something about the size of a man's fist. And so from a peripheral vision, with tears possibly running down her face, 
as she looks around with her head bowed, she sees the scribes and she sees the stones. There's another thing I believe that intimidates her, and that is she has to see the Savior. Yeah. Here is per perfection personified, sitting there in the temple with the Word of God in his heart, proclaiming the Word of God. And here she is, the filthy sinner, standing in the presence of the Savior. How dare we? How dare we come into his presence? Well, thank God he made a way. It's through the blood. Amen. We come through the blood. So we see the intimidating presence. Notice the second thought. That is the intended purpose. There is a purpose that they intend to do. And that is, number one, they want to shame this woman. Did they beat her Dorian? Did one of them kick the door to the bedroom in to catch her in the very act? They want to bring shame to this woman. You and I need to be real careful how we treat people. They want to bring shame into her life. They want to bring scorn into her life. This is an I'm better than you attitude. This is, well, I've done some things, but I haven't done that. I haven't done adultery. And we look at sin the way man looks at sin. God, I believe, looks at sin a whole lot different. I don't have time to get into that. They want to scorn her. At least I haven't done that. And be careful how you say, well, that'll never happen to my kids. That'll never happen to my grandkids. That'll never happen in my church. Amen. I'll take something. The devil takes that, I believe, as a challenge. So the intended purpose is to shame her and to scorn her. And really it is to stone her. That's what they've come to. They've come for. They've come to stone this woman. So we see the intimidating presence and the intended purpose. But now don't you see the introspective pause. The Bible said, verse 3, the scribes and Pharisees brought in the woman taken in adultery. When they set her in the midst, they say in their master, this woman is taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses will all command us that such should be stoned, but what says thou? This they said, tempting him that he might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down on his finger, rolling the ground as though he heard them not. There's something to be said for silence. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said to them, He that I sent among you, let him first cast the stone at her. And yet he stooped down and wrote on the ground. They which heard it being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning to ever see the last. And Jesus was left alone, the woman standing in the midst. Here we find an introspective Paul. Jesus is giving them a, a, a moment to examine themselves. And boy, we find a word here, and that word is the word conscience that I find very rare in 2024. We've seared our conscience over with a hot iron to where we're not ashamed of anything that goes on. There is never any embarrassment. There is never any shame. We always want to point the finger and blame someone else for what would happen in our life. And I want to tell you something. The Lord paused for a minute to let them know. I want you to speak first of all in this pause. The gall, the brazen boldness coupled with insolence of these men bringing this woman before Jesus. The gall. I don't know about you, but we would rather think the worst of people than we would the best. That's why they sell so many millions of copies of those little rag papers that's at the checkout. You see them. 87 year old grandmother gives birth to alien twins. <laughs> uh, God, read that. <laughs> Elvis singing Hardy's in Utah. I knew his I did a great Elvis impersonation. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. Some of you need to get over it. Yeah. 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 The gall, the gall of bringing this woman 
into the presence of the Savior. Not only the gall, but the guile. What is guile? That is that that children do not have. My dad was the meanest pastor I ever knew. He's been in the Lord now seven or eight years. Put a, built a building out in Andrews, Texas, not far from my hands. Put a thermos down the back wall, didn't run any wires to it. <laughs> all the men went by and made it colder, and all the women went by and made it warmer. Everybody's happy because they thought they'd run the show. The room was up on the battery. He'd sense things go a little pear shaped around the church. He'd get a little four or five year old girl up in his arms. How you doing, sweetheart? How you doing, fine pastor? How's your puppy? My puppy's doing good. What does mama think about the preacher? <laughs> <laughs> and with no guy, she says, Mama thinks you're a big man. <laughs> now you know where she got that. And as sweet as he could, he said, well, that's wild about that. What does daddy think? Well, daddy says whatever mama said. <laughs> the guy, you say, what are you talking about? Where's the man? Yeah, that's right. If they really follow the Mosaic law, and if they really want to stop this woman, the Bible said, the law said, both of them did it. Yeah, right. I just wonder if it wasn't one of them that said her up. So we see the introspective pause, the guile, the gall, the guilt. Yeah. If you're not guilty, just go ahead and stop. He could say that because he knew every one of them was right. guilty. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm looking at you and you've got given eyeballs. There's nobody perfect here. Right. Hey, none of us even close to me. We've got to be real careful. I've said it three times now, how we treat people. We get out of the problem of sin. So we see the intended purpose, the intimidating presence, the intended purpose, the introspective pause. Notice number whatever this is, the immutable pardon. So now he said, if you don't have any sin in your life, just go ahead and throw the stones. And he reaches down to write something else. As far as we know, he only wrote two sermons and didn't preach either one of them. Yeah. 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 And they leave from the oldest to the youngest one by one because their conscience has told them they're just as guilty as this one. I have done this. I've done things that's just as bad against the Spirit of God and against the Lord. The immutable part. It was a divine part. This is the this is the one that stepped out of nowhere and stood on nothing and spoke the world into existence. God was there, Jesus was there, and the Holy Spirit was there. Amen. And He's the one that made the universe, made the stones they had in their hands. And he said, if you don't have any sin, you just go ahead and throw the stone. And when they don't, he pardons this yeah. This is better than a presidential pardon. Yeah. This is better than a yeah. governor's pardon. Yeah. This is an immutable pardon. This pardon cannot be rescinded. It cannot be taken back. It cannot be altered in any way. And I'm thankful that one day Jesus looked at me and said, you're guilty of sin. But because I shed my blood at Calvary and you asked me to, I'm going to forgive you. Yeah. Yeah. And never yeah. 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 The time sins, my sin brought up is when I bring it. Yeah. He's forgotten that sin. Yeah. It is a divine pardon. It is a directing pardon. Yeah. What did he tell her? Go and sin no more. Place called Crackerberg. You, <laughs> you look like you're there. We stopped making that seven years ago, and when they started getting people to lift it up with beer and wine, and uh, we started out. And the manager said, "Sir, how was your meeting?" He hadn't asked me. I wouldn't have told him, but he asked me. 
I said, you put sugar in the green beans? He said, yeah. I said, quit. <laughs> But he asked me, and I told him, amen. Go. You think she sinned again after she left? She's human, and she probably did. He's directing her. She's going to sin no more. 1973, our home, my dad's church, I was 17 years old. We drove from Andrews, Texas, to Weatherford, Texas, to a youth camp. We had a lot of youth, uh, churches there. We divided up and played all kinds of games, volleyball. One of the things they played was slow pitch softball. I hate slow pitch softball. I'd rather watch it sit around after a hard rain and watch a crash come up than to play slow, slow pitch softball. I stand on the mound, 17 years old, getting ready to throw that ball, hoping that it would hit. I just get something over. Get some hats. Even if a even if base score to run, that'd be better than nothing, amen. And as we're getting ready to throw the ball, something on this side of the field moved or did something that caught my attention on my peripheral. And just before I threw the ball, I looked over there, and there stood a 15-year-old girl with long blonde hair and beautiful green eyes. <laughs> and when our eyes locked, she got my attention. She made them my hairs jump up and down. <laughs> what is it? Eyelashes. <laughs> I have, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Real facts, baby. Yeah, amen. Girls can do that. Yeah. If you're a boy, you can do that. You stay away from me. Yeah. That's right. Check your jaw, amen. When our eyes locked, she run in there. I, 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 I hair's up and down. I lashes up and down. I dropped the ball out of my hand. Love fell off my hand. You know, Paul wrote in Philippians 3 12 that I may apprehend that for which also I have been. In a moment's time, she had apprehended, arrested, handcuffed, tased, tased. <laughs> As soon as she, as soon as she got through doing that stuff, she turned around and left. Why well, bother? It's in their DNA. Among other things, every woman's born with a manipulating gene. I won't get into that. But she left. I followed her. She did not leave to get away from. She left without her knowing what she was doing to pull me after her. And Paul said, one day on the road to Damascus, the light shone from heaven. And every time Paul told it, it got bigger in his life. He said it's a light. The second time he said it's a great light. And the third time he said it's an exceeding bright light. Paul said he stopped me, he arrested me, and I've been trying to get to him every single I apprehend that for which also I am. It was a great day this morning. She didn't know it. God brought him the presence of Christ. God bless you. Amen.